first week of study went great. I'm glad you're back for week two and just ready to get moving through this. It was really uh, fun to connect with some of you on Periscope this week and we're all kind of learning that. And so if you haven't jumped in on that, I encourage you to do that. And hey, when you are on there with me, I'd love for you to comment or anything like that. You can kind of, if you like some of the things I'm saying, you can uh, tap it. It'll put little hearts up there and it just kind of helps us to interact. So, um, and if you have things you want to share back and we can kind of have conversation and we'll just get this thing working. So it will really provide some connection for this study. We want to be here for you in this study. We are doing it online and so it's kind of this individual thing you can do on your own, but we don't want you to feel like you're out there on your own doing it. So feel free to reach out to us, our website, Periscope, uh, Facebook, and make comments or, or ask questions or anything like that. We want to be here for you as, as a resource and it's not too late to jump in, so please invite your friends uh, to, to do that. You know, if you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, then you'll automatically get the email that the video is up on Monday. If not, you can just go search it out, and either way is fine, but it'll just make it a little bit easier for you, and then we kind of have an idea of who's participating too if you do subscribe to the YouTube channel. So, great stuff, hope you'll, hope you'll do that. I do wanna ask you, have any of you started memorizing? And have any of you used this card that we put on the website? You can, I'll kind of hold it up here a little bit. We posted this on the website. You can access it, print it, cut it out, and uh, several copies if you'd like. You'll notice that there's several different colors that we've used uh, to kind of break it down into sections. Because sometimes when you look at a passage, you're like, oh, that's so big. I don't know that I can do that. This is Jesus' resume that we talked about last week, Hebrews 1, 1 through 3. And uh, great verses that really just tell us who Jesus is. And we'd love to encourage everyone to try to memorize this over the, the time of the Bible study. And I know for some of you, this is going to be a real stretch. Some of you, you've already really developed your memorization muscle and discipline. And, and really, you ought to push yourself a little further than memorizing this. And maybe you ought to memorize each of the verses that go with the wonders each week. So however you feel like God's calling you to do that, we just want to encourage you to, to try to put that uh, memorization discipline to use a little bit during the study uh, time over, over these next 11 weeks. It's such a benefit. And one of the things, too, I wanted to point out, you know, a lot of memorization is just learning tricks of, of how to do it well and I find that finding little patterns sometimes helps like for instance in these first two sections uh, it says God after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways if you're any kind of an English person you hear them pinging like crazy there's prepositions all over that thing it starts off with God and then it's after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways. All those prepositions, and they just help you to kind of hang hang, um, hang on to those words a little bit as you're first getting them in. And then they get down into your heart, and then God can begin to really speak to you through them. So finding little patterns, we can help you do that. If you're, if you're getting stuck, um, we'll reach out to us, and we'll definitely um, help you with that. And I encourage you to try that, maybe to print off that card and, and do, some of those, do some of those things, and maybe even push yourself a little further, like I said, to memorize some of the other um, some of the other verses. You know, memorizing uh, truth helps us to make sure that we are not mocking or scoffing or despising God's Word. Like we looked up uh, last week in our study in 2 Chronicles, uh, that's really what the children of Israel did to the Word of the Lord in a general sense. And, you know, we don't want to be those people. And I hope you took the time this week in our, from our study notes to look up what those words really mean. And because here's the thing, you know, you can look at those words and read that about the children of Israel and go, oh, I don't do that to God's word. Those are really brash, harsh words. You know, I don't mock or despise or, or scoff at the word of the Lord. But sometimes when we really settle and we let the Holy Spirit speak to us and show us what's really going on. I know, for, for instance, the word despise. You know, the word despise, it, it can bring about a real brashness to it, like, it, like it's something very um, uh, abrasive, you know, kind of in your face. But despise can also have a meaning of just neglecting. Like, you just don't care about it at all, so you just ignore it. And really, I've been guilty of that many times over in my lifetime um, with the Word of God. 
that I just neglected it because I really didn't care about it enough. And so we just want the Holy Spirit to, to bring that stuff out of us and say, I don't want to be like that. And, and what we want to do is, like we looked at that verse in uh, Hebrews 12, we want to see to it that we are not refusing him who is speaking to us. And, and, and in doing this study and digging into these wonders, um, we're, we're not going to. We're, we're not going to be that person who's scoffing or mocking or despising the word of the Lord. We're saying, God, give it to us. We want to know what your word says. We want to listen and we want to hear what the cross is, is really speaking to us. So that's not our approach right now to, to mock or scoff or despise. I know it's not yours because you're digging in here with me. So, so let's see uh, really what this is, is saying to us. You know, this book of Hebrews, like we talked about last week, is really full of things that, that the cross speaks to us. And, and these things uh, should leave us in wonder. As we look at them with depth and, and, and go, what is God saying here? And really dive in, it's like, wow, really? That, that's for me? That's, that's the response that we want to have. We want to be in wonder of, of the cross. And um, so today, what we're going to do is we're going to move past chapter one, where we started last week. And I've got some notes here. You can tell I'm kind of looking at because I want to make sure that I bring out all the things that I think the Lord has shared with me. But we just want to really look here in the word. You know, um, chapter one really is is about who Jesus is at the beginning. And then it takes us through chapter one and it really differentiates between Jesus is not just an angel. He's not just some heavenly being. He's much higher than the angels and it kind of lays it out side by side. This is what the angels are like and this is what Jesus is like. And, and then even in chapter two, it goes on to say for that reason, because he really has the authority to speak, he's God. We gotta be careful that we really pay close attention uh, to, to what he said. And, and it goes on and it, it brings Jesus into this life on this earth and, and really then brings it down to the sanctifying work that he did on the cross for us. So pick up with me in verse 11 of chapter 2. Again, I'm reading out of the New American Standard Bible. Whatever version you have, I encourage you to get it open. But it says, For both he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified are all from one Father, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will proclaim thy name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation. I will sing thy praise. There is so much wonder in this message of the cross that tells us really that the cross positions us as brothers and sisters with Christ. It makes us family. So first let's identify a little bit. You know, in verse 11, it says, he who sanctifies, both he who sanctifies. Who is he who sanctifies? That's Jesus. What, what does it mean to be sanctified? When, when a sanctifying work is a work that cleanses, it's a process. It's a cleansing and a setting something apart to be holy. Jesus did that for us through that purification of sins on the cross. So both he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified, who's that? That's us, okay? all the children that receive Christ and are willing to be sanctified. So he's the sanctifier. We're the ones who are being sanctified. It says we're all from one father. And so what's saying here is that Jesus, he's not ashamed to call us his siblings. He's not ashamed of us. Now, just because we are technically family to him now, does not mean that he had to embrace us as family. But this is telling us that he does embrace us as family. So we wanna dig into this and, and, and see the wonder that's there for us as people in a broken world who maybe don't always have the acceptance that we need or the leadership of an elder brother that we need. It's all right here for us, right in this verse because of what Jesus did on the cross. The cross is speaking to us and telling us what we have in Christ, this position as family. First of all, it tells us he's not ashamed of us. I want to ask you, maybe have you ever been ashamed of somebody else? Maybe even somebody in your family, uh, you, you didn't want to be associated with them for one reason or another. Maybe it was a lifestyle choice they had. Maybe it was how they looked. I mean, and that really has to do with our own selfish pride or how they acted or they just made you uncomfortable or for whatever reason, you just didn't want to be around a certain person. And we probably all had that 
in one form or another. It just kind of, that, that being ashamed of somebody kind of just takes over our heart and our relationship sometimes. But you can flip that around too and maybe ask yourself, have you ever been in the position where somebody's been ashamed of you? Where you were fully aware that you were not wanted, that they didn't feel like you measured up, or that you, you know, met the grade. And, you know, that's, that's really an awful feeling to have in, in your heart and in an experience and relationship with someone. When you think about it, Jesus and seeing how he set up his holy God here in chapter one and even the first part of chapter two, he had every right to be ashamed of us. Every right to be ashamed of us. To want to really keep his distance from us. Just because he saved us and offered salvation to us doesn't mean he has to embrace us in like to sit around the table and, and have family time together. But see, this description of our salvation right here in verses 10 and 11 tells us that there is relationship um, definitely that goes along with our sanctification, with our salvation. And verse 12 goes on to really describe how he's going to engage all of his siblings in relationship to his father because he says, I'm going to proclaim thy name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I'm going to sing um, thy praise. This is an intimate family gathering time where the, the elder brother gathers the family together to, to honor the father. And it, it's a sacred time. It's a, it's a special time. It's not just for anybody. And so this is an intimate family gathering time. And we need to see this clearly, and we need to have our hearts open to it. You know, sometimes I think we don't really see this wonder of the cross because even though Jesus is not ashamed of us, we're so ashamed of ourselves that we really can't allow ourselves to come in and be welcomed and, and be a part of the family of God. But this tells us, this wonder of the cross tells us you belong. Jesus gathers you in. He sees you as his brother, as his sister. You're a part. And there is so much blessing and really just grabbing that for all it's worth. No matter what your past says, to know that he has sanctified you and he's in the process of sanctifying you. He saved you from your sins and then he's working out your salvation with you as you pursue holiness with him and continue to allow him to speak into your lives. But there's more to see here in this as well because what we find also is that Jesus is the elder brother for us. In this work of the cross, it's all positioned that way now. We're family and he's the firstborn. He's the elder brother. Now, that means something in our culture, but oh, it meant so much in the culture of biblical times. And it really had a lot to do with leadership, with, with that position of leadership, of being able to speak and lead the family. And you know, a lot of us, maybe we didn't grow up with, um, with an older brother or an older sibling who really led the way for us. And maybe we've longed for that. Maybe we had an older brother or sister and they just didn't do a good job or maybe we were only a child or whatever. We just not, a lot of people don't have somebody that really nurtures their soul. Jesus is saying here, look, I wanna, I wanna call you up to, to worship your father. I wanna, I wanna lead this family well and I want you to let me lead you. And you know what, there is such a blessing in letting Jesus lead you. And, and coming under that covering of having an older brother who will fight for you and protect you and love on you and gather you in and make sure that you are a part of things. And so, you know, just looking into this with wonder to see you have an older brother. You know, this is so good to just uh, meditate on, look at closely, listen to carefully. Because, you know, shame stings. But drawing in, oh, it brings healing. And more than anything, we deserve that shame from God, but that's not what we receive because of the cross. The cross draws us in as family. And because of that work on the cross, we also get positioned as a sibling with Christ, and he's our older brother. So we want to make sure that we really hear, really see, really take in those implications of the work on the cross. We're a family we have an older brother who's protecting and loving and leading us. That's part of the blessing of the cross for us in our lives. And so just like it says in Hebrews 12 at the end, let's be careful 
Let's be careful that we don't refuse him who is speaking, that we don't, we don't see ourselves differently than a part of the family of God, that we don't see ourselves as all alone or, or not having anyone to lead us. We do. We have an older brother. His name is Jesus, and he's perfect in every single way. Just like last week, you can find those uh, follow-up study notes on our website, and that'll help you to dig into this a little bit more and ponder and think through uh, some of what this is telling us in, in this wonder of the cross in, in Hebrews 2, 11 and 12. And so you'll want to get that and uh, let us hear from you. If you have any questions, again, encourage you to memorize. Uh, you'll hear me say that often. I'm doing that right along with you and, and zooming in on some of these verses to really get down in my heart. And, and I'm digging into this too, you know. I need God to minister these truths to me and stare at these wonders and let them speak to me. So I just pray blessings on you this week and I'll be praying for you all week as you're studying. Reach out if you have questions or just want to talk about what God is showing you. And hopefully we'll pop in on Periscope too. God bless.